So here are two, two episodes in Australia. In the last episode, Vertigo on the main deck, the brand new Olympic swimming pool, Peter's records in sports, despite it all, boredom, hesitation about the unknown, consideration for distances, the volleyball field in the middle, return on the site. Episode number three, the project. Both of them harnessed to some heavy piece of wood, sheltered in their tent, they achieved a strong structure. The water was soft and drinkable. They glided along the narrow bank, and at the end of this kind of goat, their landing met the clamor of the little ones. Pierre threw a, bud <laughs> Pierre threw a bundle of burning dry grass. There, between the roots of an oak, Jacques planned to launch a few rockets. In the last episode, Peter's records in sports, despite it all boredom, hesitation about the unknown, consideration for distances, the volleyball field in the middle, return on the site, the stadium passing by, the project abandoned. Episode number four, the work of art. This is an important episode. They proceeded until they reached Sydney. Pierre lost control of his fierce vehicle. Oh, if I ever catch up with it. This is the corpse of a coyote. At last, we got him, Jacques screamed. Yes, yes, hooray for Jacques. They resumed their work with such spirit. Jacques managed to pierce a hole. As for Pierre, he replaced the old flag. Those young woodchoppers dedicated so much to their task. Pierre and Jacques manufactured a huge puppet. making linkages between the words and the images, um, what do you look for? Is it is? Hmm. That's a good question. I look for... Um, I look for interesting encounters, really. And they can be interesting to me for many different reasons. It can be formal, thematical, or it can be one can can contradict the other sometimes it's like a dialogue you know so there are many reasons why you want a dialogue or you, you want to to uh, have an exchange you know it can be agreement disagreement you know um, but usually there's a kind of analogy i would say analogy between the two for me so that they don't they don't refer to each other, or they don't illustrate each other directly, but there's a kind of counterpoint analogy. Um, but it would be easier to, 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 to answer with an example, because there's so many different you know, uh, situations. <laughs> Some of them can be completely arbitrary, like yeah. chance encounters. But if we keep them, if it's because we find something that we like in the, in, in the accident. Yeah. Okay, I'm kind of wondering, are the uh, sports uh, creatures, mm -hmm. uh, actual sculptures mm -hmm. in real life, uh, actual full-size sculptures, I think it might be important to uh, let the viewers know that because it kind of adds a layer about sculpture mm -hmm. because one thinks of a sculpture as standing, bless you, in one place and um, you know it doesn't move and here they become animated and almost personified mm -hmm. and we have mm -hmm. empathy for them at times and mm -hmm. um, 
almost paintings in their own right in each frame. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Yeah. And um, it just, it's just one more, one more thing that has been reminding me the last three days that many things I would normally believe to be fixed are not really fixed, mm -hmm. you know, and the sculptor must be thinking this as well. And it reminds me of Alexander Calder and some things he did and when he went to mobiles and rhythm. Yeah. And, you know. But well, literally the sculptures don't move. They don't. In they the don't in the film. No, but they appear to they be... Slide, they slide, but they're fixed images. But they're not mobile in themselves, never. But they I never move. They that they were acting no, the no. What you see there is, is usually, I think, um, small scales, uh, how do you say, maquette, you know, oh, yes. uh, models. models for the sculptures, and uh, collage for the landscapes of mm -hmm. different kinds of images. But when you see the actual sculptures, although the, most of them are very big, they're in the same kind of position. Sometimes they look like an animal or, or, or even a human creature. <coughs> But it's not moving, but it can be also in his exhibition, he had many exhibitions recently with his sculpture, it can also be in a kind of environment looking a little like that with fake children, uh, you know, ch um, a little like the, um, the playground constructions of fake rocks and things like that. So it's. Out something, like a they, they look like they could move. That's yeah, for, yeah. that's for sure. And he also made some animated um, sort of cartoons with them. There's one of them in the DVD oh, actually, okay. where, for example, this basketball um, uh, hoop, 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 hoop. hoop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this hoop is is running in one of them, yeah. oh, okay. like you know. And, um, so he, yeah, he, he thinks of the movement, obviously, but usually they're just, you know, classical sculptures in this sense. But I think this, this tension between sort of moving and not moving, you, you introduced it to each of these pieces as a sort of travel piece. Mm -hmm. And in this last one in Australia, all the images were sort of not moving, either out of the, the eye hole of the door of all these fish in the aquarium and, 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 mm -hmm. and things like this. And there's a sort of, also in the sculptures, there's, I mean, you're going back and forth between moving and not moving, which I think was perhaps what this last to me anyway, part of this last, last piece might have been. And, and then is there also a tension between, I mean, the, the words which are static and the moving images, is there a way of kind of, that the, the, the words are starting to move a bit too? Mm -hmm. in, in mm -hmm. Yes, because it's, a, you're right, it's, it's not a real travel, obviously, and it's, it's not even a real movement in this sense. It's, it's more of, you know, like Jules Verne is, is well known, to have never traveled in his life, practically. So it's more of an imaginary and artificial, like very artificial construction of a travel out of little bits and pieces of, of folklore and mythology, really. So you're right that it's all encapsulated in a way, in a, in a closed space where you can turn or circulate, but not really move very much. I agree. Uh, I remember last time you presented this you did not give us images and you allowed the letters to dance and to change and so on mm -hmm. uh, in itself. So it's for you kind of a next, a different medium now to, yes. to allow others and words to right, come right. in. Yeah. Right, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. <coughs> Kira, uh, if you're planning to, uh, to have the uh, published this DVD in English, uh, are you planning to have the uh, subtitles? as a part of the frame, or outside the frame, or you will uh, recite the uh, poetry in English? I would love to have to answer this question, but I doubt <laughs> I will. <laughs> no, but it is a good question, of course. I think subtitles might work, because most of it is, is a voiceover, or off voice, and so subtitles shouldn't be too much in the way. Where are you going to put them, outside the frame, or out, you know, within the frame? <laughs> But you know, there is this new movement that to uh, make subtitles a part uh -huh. of the film itself. Right, you right. Know, to preserve this coloring the film. and this changing and this calling in the uh, graphic yes. designers to, to help them out as more than just readability. Yes, yes. I think your stuff would kind of uh, invite That's some, true. some new layer at, That's uh, true. That's uh, true. to it. I yeah. don't know how expensive it is, but it's quite No, but it would, be, <laughs> it, it would be a good thing to work on. Yeah. I'd, I'd like to work on it. Actually.